It's a time for... Hmm, which one shall I open? It's like my birthday with a package from China. So let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. Because we're going to take a close look at the Super MIDI Mega Drive Full HD, the SG816. But this is the Fusion. And the reason why I call this thing the Fusion, it's more like Fusion. The reason is very simple is that this thing has 8-bit and 60-bit inside. And that's a very interesting fusion of those two things. Never seen it. There is, by the way, not a lot of information on the box. Linux or warnings. This product is not washable and cannot be soaked. Yeah, I know. Why, should, why do we even want to do that? HDMI out. That is quite interesting, in my opinion, because that's something you don't see a lot with these boxes or mini fake devices. Whoa, this thing looks really weird. I don't know what it is, more like the Frankenstein beefy, weird looking Sega 16 bit. I have never, never seen something like this. Or I do. Yeah, I do. I think they reused this, by the way. Yeah, they reused this bloody thing. Okay, so here having like the. This is like the best toilet paper manual I've ever seen. Like, this is the manual. That's it. It's nothing more. Explanation how it's connected. Yeah, I can figure that out. If I can't, I need to stop making videos, of course. A lot of plastic. And power supply, HDMI, cable, but the question remains. The real question remains. How good are the controllers feeling? Because that is always like in question. Ooh. Ooh, let me smell it. No, it doesn't smell at all. And the D-pad, it's more like the floating D-pad, but that feels very nice. You can see like the buttons are horrible quality. Like when you're pressing one, you can see them all moving around. But the D-pad, mm-mm. There is no button over here like the original one, had like the extra button. They do come with the original connection. Hmm. Interesting, but let's hook it up. And let's see what we're going to get because 16-bit, 8-bit fusion. I think this cannot be a good combination. Okay, everything has been connected. The LED goes on, so that's a very positive thing. Oh, so we're going to get the language selection. That is new. Okay. Ugh. Oh, that sound. I've heard it before. Oh, so we're going to get the menu with 8-bit and 16-bit. Uh, okay, there are a lot of, lot of different games on it. 86. Oh, boy. So they're selling this thing like a 16-bit Sega clone fake weird thing, fusion whatsoever. But there are only like a handful of games on it. Oh man, I don't even like super good games. Club Sucker, Dino Land. It came from the desert. What the hell is that for kind of game? I've never heard of it. But that's it. Oh boy, so shall I be trying one? Let's try a couple of them. Let's see how the 16-bit stuff runs. So far, so good. All right. Oh, you can see that it doesn't run on a very good emulator. It doesn't run that great. So shall we try some different games? Shall we try like a fast game? Maybe we can see how bad that is. You can just hear the ring sound, it's not like it should be. The image looks really choppy. But I must say that the D-pad itself is... It's, it's, just a mis it's just a mystery, man. How can you mess up like these freaking buttons, but the D-pad is just perfect. And it is also like they have like kind of weird filter over it. Yeah, so if you ask me, like, the 16-bit is just a freaking nightmare. Absolutely. So let's check out the 8-bit stuff. There is, by the way, no quick load, quick save whatsoever. I'm not going to go through the full list because it's just too big. 
it's just such a huge list and i'm guessing there are a lot of homebrew stuff on it a lot of crappy titles like they're all doing and in the end they're just going to repeat themselves <laughs> because it's us what that they mostly do of the time like back in the 90s okay so let's try some games and let's see how they are running What I do notice with the D-pad is it's super sensitive. No, don't think so. Watch out! Wow. We do have turbo buttons. Oh crap. Damn the D-pad. Oh crap. Let's start off with the weird games. I have no idea what to do anymore with this game. Oh, you need to kick them off. Yeah, that was what it was. Just kick the bloody thing. Ah! Spankman is coming for you. Spankman is going to spank you a lot. But then overall, like the performance of the NES games are not that bad at all. <coughs> Ooh, a lot of hearts. They must love me. Thank them more. Oh. I love this game. This game is so much fun. Nobody shoots the spank man. I will just punch you in the balls. <laughs> okay guys so it's time for some rip and tearing because i just wanted to know what's inside the machine and how does it look i'm so so when i see surprised i was surprised to see that this thing has actually like 8-bit and 60-bit games i'm more like why are the rest like they did make like super nes versions that are most of the time quite horrible but they had the option to play like mame and all the other things so it's quite a weird very weird choice but so you're making like a 60-bit clone, you're adding games, and you practically like destroy the system with the software part because the 16-bit games are just running like shit. So what's the point of a 16-bit clone that doesn't run 16-bit games? So you can tell me, so let's say like leave it in the comments if you know. But this is the thing that always happened, and that's the reason why I love to make these reviews. Besides like punishing myself, buying crap, it's more like helping you out guys, you know, like to see more like and warn you more like don't buy the stuff because it's just a freaking waste of money. Especially with stuff like this. Okay, so let's take a close look here. What is interesting that they are using this Monkey King 3B chip. I'm really giving you a quick overview of the main board and everything else. So at the front we're going to get one PCB and this PCB contains the two ports. The on and off switch and the reset switch. It's just like basic technology, nothing really special. But let's take a close look at the main board, because this is quite interesting. So they have been using this Monkey Chip 3B a lot. And with a lot like a mini clone especially. But the weird thing is like with my previous videos I made, most of them had like pretty decent emulation. So I don't know where they did wrong, why did they just wrong, go wrong with this? It's a little bit of a bummer in my opinion, because Sometimes these products can be pretty decent, but this is just one big freaking nightmare of a disaster. And also there is no way of adding games. What we're going to do is like unscrew these. Maybe there is a CF slot on the bottom. You never know where they basically put it. So that's what we're going to do. And we got to just see on the inside and the on the underside what are we going to get? Because Wicked wants to see it all. Okay. Yeah, so basically it's a bummer. There is no CF card and yeah, I think there is no way of adding some games to this. Piece of crap. You can't fix it. Okay guys, so this is what you're going to get with this Fusion Super Mini MD Video Day TV Game Station, whatever. It doesn't even matter how you call this is. Because, oh man, it's so bad. 
The controllers, that was like a part of it, a surprise, and the reason why in part, because the T-pad is a little bit sensitive, but it feels very nice. That's the way I love to see my D-pads, but the buttons, oh boy, it's really awful. And I was more like, such a bummer. The system itself, it's a freaking joke, come on. So beside the point that it looks more like a weird Frankenstein beefy system, it's a fun collectible to have in your on your maybe your, your glass case collection of mini fake systems. But playing actually on it 16 bit, you can just basically wipe this off because it doesn't play at all. Maybe it does run well, but yeah, let's be honest, guys. If you're buying in 60 bit stuff, weird clone system, you don't buy it for the 8 bit stuff. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. Let me know what you think of this, and uh, I will see you in the next video. And don't forget to hit that little bell.